So yeah, I'm going to start. This is uh, Daniel Yu with Nick Nguyen. And um, we're going to sort of debrief uh, the past couple quarters of distance learning. And um, I, I guess I'll start by asking sort of, where was your baseline uh, in terms of the teaching? Like what was going on before you made this change in your, in your approach? Uh, so in quarter one, I feel we were all new to it, just trying to figure out what we were gonna do, right? No one had any idea what we were doing. And I felt like we were kind of doing what we, at the beginning of this year, quarter one of distance learning, I felt like we were doing what we've kind of been doing um, even before the pandemic of just trying to take um, curriculum and just try to modify it for our needs, our, our, our current particular needs. Um, and I felt like that wasn't working um, for a couple of reasons. One, maybe I think that there wasn't enough structure or rigor in the curriculum that we were taking from. Um, and then also, um, when we got to distance learning, I felt like in each of our cohorts that we were teaching, there were just such a wide range of needs that we kind of had to, um, what do you call it? What do you say? Um, we kind of had to figure out a solution individually for each of our cohorts. Or I, that's how I felt. Well, I felt like the teachers that I were collaborating with, um, their group of students had different needs than my students. And whatever we were collaborating, wouldn't necessarily catch all of the students that we were working with. Right. Makes sense. Right. Definitely. Would it make sense to say then that um, distance learning basically it made more obvious the need for differentiation because in the Zoom, in the synchronous uh, learning situation that we're in, it's very, very clear if learning is happening or not. Yeah, well, to add, it's, I don't know. I'm just thinking about like the things that are going on in the world right now and you know how the pandemic and coronavirus has kind of just like blown up what America is. I feel like that's kind of what it's do doing to education in, in, um, in the classroom, maybe at our school. Um, yeah, some things are just blowing up and, and showing that it's not working. And that, maybe I've said too much. No, no, no. It's, it's good because it provides like a lot of context for sort of your your shifting and your thinking about writing your own curriculum and what you were working with before. So I'm kind of curious to know, you said even before the pandemic, um, there was some issue with content and structure, um, but you were going along with it. You were just basically teaching somebody else's curriculum and having like a diversity of experiences with that. Some people are being successful, some people were not. Can you talk a little bit about what was that shift in your thinking? And I guess in terms of a step-by-step -step looking at it, how were you able to think differently about the content? And then how were you able to think differently about the structure of instruction as, it, as you sort of moved into this new, new way of teaching, your, your own way of teaching? Well, I feel like it's just accumulative of, uh, of all the conversations we've had, accumulation of all the conversations we've had uh, from last year about like talking about like writing your own curriculum and then um, finally having, yeah, so all those conversations that we had and then I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just like that, that PD that you were through where it was like the, the inquiry of like, what is learning? You know, I felt like, um, like that kind of gave me some confidence, but also like um, just working working with collaborating with others at a distance, you know, like mm -hmm. I think that I don't want to say like I don't I'm not like trying to be collaborating or anything, but like collaborating at a distance is, is so challenging. And then I think I kind of realized that like the other teachers had a had a different vision for their students and I had a different vision for my students. Um and so, and then so what, maybe it's because, oh, go ahead. Uh, I mean, and it's just, it's just, we had different visions just because we had different students. Mm -hmm. So like Got the differentiate, the, we needed to differentiate um, differently as teachers, just because we also had different teachers. So, 
So then how would you describe what, uh, what has improved about your practice now that you've tried two different versions of it uh, during quarters one and two? Um, I think I'm, I'm just putting more focus on um, certain content, um, certain areas in the content um, that, that like concepts in the content that are, um, that are important that I felt like we weren't focusing enough. I'm just putting, I'm just putting more focus, more of my energy on focus on the things that I think are important or that we're like missing in that curriculum. Mm. That like, it wasn't necessarily bad because the teachers or whoever created the curriculum were doing the best that they could with what they had. And maybe they had different students as well. But, um, I lost a blank. What, what was the question again? <laughs> like, what is what is improved about your practice? I guess in terms. Oh, what is improved? Yeah, I, I think just like taking ownership of the curriculum and and like finding a path where that like I can lead and like I know step or like that I'm really familiar with that I could connect help the students connect the dots. Yeah. Um. If that makes sense, like it's like I have a vision and I and I built this thing and I can go push it forward. Right, right. As opposed to like taking someone else's and kind of um, trying to hold things together. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe like we don't have the same vision, so like I, I can't necessarily teach what they what they have, or or I, I don't know what they ima necessarily imagined. So, right. Um, and I, well, I guess what has improved in quarter one and quarter between now and. and the, uh, from the beginning until now is like I'm having students collaborate with each other more as well instead of me being like the what's it called um instead of students talking to me and then me talking back to students and like me being like the connection between all the students right it's like students are having are talking but they're only talking to me and I have to like relate it to other students right but now students are like communicating their ideas to each other instead of me being like the middleman and what did you do about how did that come about in terms of the structure of synchronous learning um i think it really started with that video you shared with uh, the was second or third graders talking about even numbers uh -huh. you know just like if those students can have those conversations at such a young age like that like our students can definitely do that, right? Like, mm. I feel like that's where it was. I, I feel like um, in the nine and 10 world, like we we don't give the students enough credit for like how much they actually already know and they're just limited by the language, right? And so just like, maybe if we provide them with a little bit of language or like maybe if they get to use their own language a little bit, they'll start talking to each other, you know? Mm. And so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was going to. Um, and so, yeah, it's really just grouping students. And um, I think that's one of the things that's helped a lot is like thinking about effective ways to group students as well um, mm -hmm. to get them to communicate. Because that, that's something I'm struggling with right now in the beginning of the new quarter is like finding a group, um, like finding groups that work well together. And what are those... I know you haven't figured this out completely yet, but I'm curious to know what are those ingredients that are required to make a group work well together in math in a newcomer environment? Um, I think for me, sometimes I think it's, uh, I wanna put students in like their social groups, kids that like they feel comfortable talking to and being friends with. Right. Um, I want to norm that, like working well with with like you can work with your friends, but just as long as you're working. Right. Um, and I've, I've been seeing a lot of that good stuff of student friends working together. So I, I kind of try to I think now, right now, since we're in distance learning, I, that's what I'm trying to focus on, just to bring some like familiarity and comfort for the students. Right. Um, and because it's like they can't see their friends. And so it's like, all right, well, here, I'll put you with your friend. You work together. See how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of 
uh, one of the first things I'm trying to think about, like who's going to work well together. Cause I don't want people to be in the group and then, Oh, like, I don't really know you and I, or I don't really like you. So, and we're, we're like, like on the computer. So I'm not, we're not going to just do it. We're just going to sit here because sometimes that's okay for some teachers <laughs> or not, not okay for some teachers, but that's just how it's, how it is with the timing and space, space and timing. Yeah. Um, so after I look for social groups, I kind, I think about, I probably think about language next and I try to, I, I definitely want to um, get kids speaking more English, but if for whatever reason, there isn't that person who can speak English or whatever, I'll just put them all in the same language together just so that if they want to talk about math, they can talk about it in Spanish and be comfortable having those conversations. Mm. Um, um, and then once they have those those conversations of figure and it's like all right then we push them to to um use the english but they need to be comfortable understanding um having conversations about the content first right i mean if that's in their native language that's that's perfectly fine with me um and then finally i think about um about like their um, skill level, I guess. Um, and I, I would like to have like the skill levels, uh, gr students grouped by skill, but sometimes it's just not possible with, with the language right now. Um, and that's, that's one thing I'm really struggling with uh, after today. Um, yeah. Which is to identify academic skills and create some kind of baseline not not that part uh i don't know just for me i'm struggling uh, just getting groups that are like work i think i have like one group that works really well together but wow. then the rest of the students there's kind of like a imbalance somewhere we have uh, some like arabic speaking students who also who need a lot of language support and who not need a lot of um, math support um in Arabic, which is kind of rare, but thank goodness I have Mr. Yasser for that. Mm -hmm. But because their language is limited in their math, he says it's kind of basic. Um, they're kind of just gonna have to, he's, he's just gonna need to be with them. And then, but then I also have like, like maybe like eight or 10 Spanish speaking kids who were kind of in a similar boat. So it's like, they need a lot of support. And so it's like, I kind of have to take some of this, students who have higher skills and computer tech skills to be able to kind of like be there and uh, be a leader basically got it support them got it so you're sort of moving around in terms of shifting curriculum shifting perspectives are there any things that you feel like you're going to do differently when we go back in person that is informed by these uh, conversations and really experimentation during distance learning. Um, I think I want to continue, but just scale up or like go even more in depth since the time timing and 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 uh, time and space will be so different. I feel, like, I feel like you have so much time, so much space that we'll be able to to be able to to do things a little bit more differently. So it's like it kind of sucks that. Um, I'm like trying all these new things in this weird space, but like maybe it's good because it's like on a smaller scale and I don't have to focus on so much. Mm -hmm. But it's it's definitely giving me ideas of like, um, definitely different things to do than we were doing before, right. such as the way that we group people. And then also I think with the way we differentiate the material, I think that's like the biggest thing that I can see to, to see like, or um, like, the way that we support the curriculum and, and differentiate it for for the different students. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, I think that's what they were trying to, the creators of the past curriculum, that's what they were trying to do, like differentiate it. But I feel like it doesn't support all ranges of students. Mm -hmm. So it feels like you were able to figure out uh, another range of yeah. differentiation. And by doing that, you're able to figure out a way to get deeper into the curriculum conceptually so that students yeah. are not just doing rote memorization and application of the same kind of thing, but they're actually getting into 
um, like verbal communication so they can explain what it is they're doing um, and hopefully get a better sense of what, what that particular math is, whether it's algebra one or geometry. All right. Yep. There we go.